Hello, and welcome back to Factoria. I am Dorthek, and this is an unplanned part 4 of our train tutorial series. In part 3, we built a liquids loading and unloading station. However, I'm not really satisfied with how that station came out, and since we need a, a trains loading and unloading station in our main tutorial series, I figured I will do a short episode here to show a better way to do the station. Now, as before, we need to use pumps, and we need to use uh, staging tanks. So once again, we have these two pipes supplying us with crude oil from somewhere, and these four pipes prepare to take the crude oil away, and we'll have the same two trains running in our track. However, we're going to build a much more capable train station. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use a similar approach with, pu with our pumps. This is the locomotive. But we're going to place these pumps here and here, just to give us a little bit more space. And that's the other locomotive. And on the other side, we will put them kind of in the middle. There. As long as they're hitting the correct segment, that middle yellow segment. And as before, we're going to place tanks just ahead of them. We're going to place the tanks like so, but we're going to leave space for, for a little bit of piping. And the reason we want piping is that we're going to use these spaces here to send the fuel across to the other side. We're going to place a underground there, an underground there, an underground there, and we will add one right here. And on the other side, we're just going to use one tank on each of these pumps. I placed these slightly wrong. Let's place it here. Yes, that's correct. Are they latching on correctly? Yes, they are. Now, we're going to place a piece of pipe right here, and we're going to take another pipe and you pump and use it to feed in like so. And that will be set up this way. Now, why do we need those pumps? will become clear in just a bit. Nope, we are not lined up the way I wanted to, but that's okay. Can I move this pipe over again? No. Mm, maybe I can. Yes, it's still let you. That mean I can move this one? Yes, excellent. There we go. And we will need some more power poles here. Now, so far so good. Fuel will come into these tanks, these pumps will put it in the wagon, and these pumps will pump it into here to put it into the other side and pump from the other side. The idea is to do to balance. We want to feed the our incoming liquid as quickly as possible. That means we want to use all three tanks. The problem is fluids in Factoria are a little odd. Um, they do try to self-balance, but they don't really succeed. And what happens is if we pump all of our fluids into this side, as we saw in the previous part, they're not going to end up in here in the same quantities, which means when it's time to feed the train, these will still be pumping when this one runs out. So we're not going to get all three pumps going simultaneously. 
So what we want is to have the same amount of fuel in all of these tanks, at least approximately. So how do we do that? Well, we do it using circuits. Now, this is not a tutorial on using circuits. We, it's a, circuits are a huge, huge topic, and we just are not going to begin to do it justice. But we can do a little bit with it. So let's um, take this tank and let's feed some fuel into it. That's enough. So right now there's, if you look on the right, you can see there's 3.7 thousand units of oil. If we put a power pole here and we take a wire and run it from the tank to the power pole, we'll have created a circuit. If we now click on the tank, we can see mode of operations, read contents. And if we mouse over the power pole, we can see over on the right, there's a little green square that says 3.6K fuel. I'm not sure why it says 3.6K here and 3.7K there, but I suspect that's a rounding error. Now, the reason that green box is green is because we used a green wire. We can also use a red wire. And now that same information is presented in a red box. The important thing here is that green and red wires are separate kinds of signals. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take green wire and connect all of these tanks. When you have multiple instances of a particular signal on the same um, on the same color wire, they get added. So if we were to briefly hook this up to here, uh, let's get this train out of the way so that we're not putting it in the train yet. So if we were to briefly hook this up here, we'll pump a little bit of um, oil into our system. 2.9k, let's, uh, let's stop it. We can see that there's about 13,000 oil. Now that's not 13,000 oil in any one tank, that's 13,000 oil in the whole system. It does not count any oil that's currently in these pipes, so this number may fluctuate as oil moves around. But you can clearly see our problem. We pumped oil into here, so these tanks got some, but these did not, even though there's a connecting path. We do have oil, a lot of oil over there, though, because these pumps are pumping out of here and into there. Well, we don't really want to do that either. So how do we figure this out? Well, we do that with some more circuit uh, logic. This over here is called an arithmetic combinator, and the arithmetic combinator does math. So what we can do is we can tell it to... We can select our crude oil. We can say, take whatever crude oil we have and divide that number by 12. And then output crude oil. So what does that mean? Now, these combinators have an in and out arrow. So if we connect our tank to the input side and then mouse over it, we can see that the input signal is 13,000, the output signal is 1.1,000. Well, what is that 1.1,000? Why did I choose to divide by 12? I chose to divide by 12 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 tanks. So that represents, that output signal is the average of the amount of fuel we have in the system. Now, we're going to change that and we're going to divide that by minus 12 which will change that number to minus 1.1. All right, well, that's kind of odd. Why do we want minus 1.1? Well, because we want all of the tanks to have the same amount of fuel on average. If we take a green wire from the output and connect it to the pump itself, we can click on the pump and say to only pump if crude oil is less than zero. Now, currently, the signal is getting is the output of this, minus 1.1k. But we can take a red wire from this tank to this pump and something interesting will happen. Green and red wires don't mix, so this, the output of this tank, this red wire, the quantity in here, 4.4k, is not going to travel back into the rest of the circuit. 
but here locally at the pump it's going to add so here at the pump we're going to have the minus 1.1k output of the combinator plus the 4.4k it's going to subtract and we're going to get a positive number since we said we only want to pump oil if the number is less than zero it's negative this pump is turned off you can see there's a little red light right there showing that it's turned off and that's what we want to happen if we reconnect our crude oil input here and watch the total amount 19 20 22 23 24 25 once we get above what was in here and here we have 4.4k so we need about 48,000 in here a little more than 48,000 that pump is going to kick on because now it wants to bring the fuel level up to the average currently the average is 4.3 4.4 and you can see this little light here is flickering it flickers green the pump comes on for a moment and then it flickers back to red because it's made it back to the average so we're going to do the same thing on all of these we're going to take this green signal from here to every one of these pipes pumps Note that this green signal, that's the output, is not the same as the green signal that's adding up the inputs. If we mouse over the pump, we can see it highlights which green signal we have. If we mouse over the tank, it highlights the other green one. And then we're going to take a red from each of these individual tanks to their corresponding pipes. Then we're going to shift right click on this, shift left click, shift left click, shift left click. And this one, which had very little, that pump kicks on. This pump is off. This pump is off because our average right now is 5.6. So these two are already above it. But this one needs to catch up. As soon as this one gets up to 5.6, it's going to cut off the pump. Let's watch that for a sec. 0.5, 5.6. And it stops. There's a little bit of a rounding error and delay. Now, that ensures that each one of these tanks on the other side gets one twelfth of the total incoming fluid. Well, what about these tanks? Well, we can do the same thing. So let us say that we are just going to decide to bring our fuel in, our source into this tank. This is going to be our input. I'm going to break the contact because I don't actually want it pumping yet. We can... Mm, let's put it here. We can add a pump that pumps out this way. And we can do the same exact trick. We can take our green wire from the output of this combinator to this pump. So this is going to pump into here. Let's uh, actually do this. Yeah, like that. So if this pump were to come on, it would pump from this pair of tanks into this pair of tanks. When do we want to do that? When these tanks are getting low. Now, because it's pumping into this one first, this tank will always have a little bit more than that one. So we're going to take this tank and connect it to the pump in the same fashion. Shift right click, shift left click. Mm, we need some... More of these guys. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing over here. green wire from this pump to that pump red wire from this tank to this pump shift right click shift left click and let's do the same thing again we can cut it and paste it a 
green wire from this pump to that pump, red wire from this tank to this pump. And now we can see these tanks are getting pumped down, these tanks are getting pumped up. Uh, let's connect our fuel and we can watch as the pumps do their thing. Our average is 6.6 .6 right now, so any of the ones that are above that, like these, the pump is not going to kick in. Any that are below, the pumps will kick in. Now, we are currently in a very off-balance situation because we didn't start it with this, but over time this will settle down. This is a very effective way to load our train in a in a way that makes sure that all of our tanks are balanced. And by making sure all of our tanks are balanced, we can make sure that we load as quickly as we possibly can. Now what about our unloading station? Well, well we want to do much the same thing, only in reverse. So, I'm going to do a copy on this. But I'm only going to get... I don't want the trains. I... well... yeah, we're just going to need to reprogram that. That's fine. So let's cut and paste that here. Now these pumps need to be reversed. Yes, all of our pumps need to be reversed over here. Mm, let's get power in here. So, a train will come in. Is that set up correctly? Let's make sure the trains latch on. These are all latched on, so we want to make sure they're all pumping away. That one is not. There we go. These are all pumping away. Then these are pumping away from these tanks. And let's say again, for the sake of convenience, that we're going to pump everything out of here. This is going to be our exit. And from here, we're going to go into up there. Which means all of these pumps are re reversed as well. Need to be reversed as well because we're pumping that way. But we also need to change their programming. Because right now, the programming is saying pump if we're below the average. We want to pump if we're above the average. Because we want to make sure we pull from whichever uh, tanks are the fullest so that there's always the same amount of oil or whatever it is in each tank so let's take a look and see how this works i'm going to add weight condition circuit condition and and weight condition circuit condition and Shift right click, shift left click, so that we have to manually toggle them. Let's send this to the pickup station. It's latching on and it's pumping. And if we look now, 17, 17, 17, 17. 17, 17, 18. These are all pretty close to each other. I remember we're constantly feeding them in. In fact, let's cut that and we will see what happens. This train is full. Let's send this one to pick up as well. It'll wait. And let's send this one off to drop off. Now it starts dumping into all of them, but it is going to try to maintain the same amount of balance. Let's cut that so that it's forced to stop. 7.6, 7.6, 7.3, 7.4, 7.7, 7.8, 11.8, 12.8. A little more here, eight. Fairly balanced. 
If we mouse over the Combinator, we can see that 7.6 is the magic number. You can see here, 10 in each one of these dropping because we are feeding the train. Let's uh, turn this one off for a sec. 2, 2.1, 1 1.1, 1 1.8. It's balancing, right? So one, the average should be 1.9, uh, 2.4, 2, 2.1, 2, 2, 2, 2 1.5. Not quite perfect, because of course this distribution system works, but we also have these passages here, so the liquid does slash back and forth a bit, but it's pretty darn close. And this is way better than just trying to rely on its natural flow. Now, these stations work uh, as we just built them. However, there is one significant limitation that, um, that we, I want to address. And that limitation is this. As we currently built it, this station will only work with crude oil. Well, sometimes we need to load or unload other liquids. How do we fix that? Fortunately, our circuits have the ability to make this better. If we look over here, we're setting for crude oil. We can instead go over to the signals uh, tab over here and choose each and change both of these to each. And what that means is it'll take every signal that comes in and apply this to it, the division by negative 12. So in this case, the only signal coming in is crude oil, but it doesn't have to be. Let's say we have this. Shift right click, shift left click to get the same signal. And here is our green connection. So we could have some other item. Let's say we have this box here and we toss into it a hundred yellow belts. We can take a green wire or a red wire. Do this. Now take a look at the side. The input signals are 4.5 thousand oil and a hundred belts. The output is minus eight belts and Minus 376 oil. Now, we don't care about anything other than oil. But that's the power of the each signal. Now, on the pumps, if we try to do the same thing, we can't do each because it doesn't really make sense for the pump. Instead, we're going to use everything. We have these two, anything, everything. Each is the third kind of wild card one. Everything will work very well for this. I'm not really going to get into the distinction between everything and anything and why one works here and the other doesn't because frankly we'll be here for much longer than I'm planning if that's what we do. So now we've reprogrammed all of those pipe pumps to work on everything and now this station is generic. Now we can use it with absolutely any fluid that we want. So what I'm going to do now is delete this part of it and make a blueprint. And we will do the same thing with the unloading station. And I will make these blueprints available in the train tutorial blueprint book. So with that, why don't you go ahead and try one of these yourself, move some fluid around. And we will be using this blueprint in our main uh, tutorial playthrough. And as always, don't forget to save.